Hello, hello. Lastly, thank you so much for being here. I know you're very busy and I love when you come um, and meet with me because you always give me so much value, so much information. So today we're going to go over specifically about the eviction process. Um, I know that as an estate attorney, you've done probate. I've actually sent you clients and you've helped tremendously. So I wanted just to go over with you about this new eviction process now because it is different now that COVID, I mean, COVID's still here, but now that things have changed, wh what are one of the things that you're doing to help um, homeowners with the eviction process? Yeah, well, thank you again for having me. And this is a great opportunity for the community to educate themselves. Um, one of the things I heard a lot during the pandemic was we want to do an eviction, but we don't think we can right now. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's such misinformation because I was filing stuff throughout the entire pandemic. There was no need to wait. There were certain things that we couldn't do, but it was at the end of the eviction. We couldn't get a warrant, but we could file the, we could serve notices to the tenants. We could file petitions. We could even get court dates. So if you have been waiting, um, now is the time to get started if you need to serve and, and evict a tenant, especially a non-paying tenant. Right. And so how do they start the process now do, uh, for them to start? The, let's say even that they're planning to start that eviction process. Like, what do you recommend them to start doing now as they're getting ready to go ahead and meet with you and reach out to you to start that process? Right. That's a great question. So I can't do anything for my clients if I don't have a copy of a deed um, and a copy of the lease for the tenants. Now, in the five boroughs, I don't need a deed necessarily because I can pull it from their online database. But anything in Nassau, or Suffolk, or Westchester, anything outside of the five boroughs, um, even Staten Island, actually, um, we need to see the deed. So you've got to get a copy of that. Um, and then if you had a lease, even if it's expired, we need that with the tenant as well. If you don't have a lease, you just did some kind of oral month to month agreement, we're going to need the names of all the tenants. So if you don't know the names, for example, people left, people came and went, other people have come in. One thing you could start doing is go down to the premises and start looking at the mail. Don't open the mail, but look and see who's receiving mail at the property and write all those names down. Take pictures because ultimately we need to name everybody who could potentially be occupying the property. So once we have the all the property address information and the names of the tenants, we can start serving notices. Perfect. So now will you be the one that's serving them the notices? Is there a specific time when they get served or is that something that the homeowner has to do on their own? Right. So the homeowner absolutely cannot serve the documents. So the service requirements in New York require that somebody who's not the homeowner serve. Now, some people can use a neighbor, a friend, a family member um, as the server, but we always recommend just going with a professional process server. You know, those are the people that they come to the door and say, you've been served. Um, those people know how to fill out the affidavits. They know the rules. If it's not done properly, the entire case can get thrown out. So it's not worth the risk to save a little bit of money. Um, just go with the professionals. I have companies that I've been using for years and I've been able to see who's a good process server, who's a bad process server. So now I know, you know, which ones I would recommend we use. Um, and then there's two types of cases that we can do for a homeowner. One is a non-pay and one is a holdover. So one is the tenant hasn't paid. We want them to pay. If they pay, they stay. Uh, the other is the tenants uh, either a nuisance or they've ex ex stayed beyond the terms of their lease. We want them to go. We want a new tenant. So each of those requires a different notice for depending on which case we're going to do. So it's going to be, you know, really a conversation with what's the goal of the homeowner? Is it just to get the money and then they can stay? Or is it I don't care if they pay, I just want them out. And then we can talk about those options. So you actually as a homeowner, you do have the option of you're saying, hey, you know what, I know you're paying me, but I either want to sell my house or I have a family member that's staying and I need that space. Can you still do the eviction process even though they're paying? Yes, as long as they don't have a valid lease. So the only if someone's in a lease and it's like a two year lease or a one year lease, you just signed it and then you're like, no, I want to help sell the house. That's going to be a lot harder to evict the tenant because you just gave them a lease. You'll have to wait till the expiration date. Um, but depending on how long they've been there, we can give them the notice during the lease term as long as we line up the eviction date with the end of the lease date. 
Got it. And you know, Leslie, a lot of the homeowners that I'm working with, they're right now concerned. They're like, well, you know, it's COVID still, right? And you're saying, hey, you can still go ahead and file, but they're thinking, hey, it's going to take me a year. It's going to take me two years to get these people out. What are you seeing now? Because what I'm hearing is there's tons of cases, right? There's tons of files of people that want to evict non-paying tenants. So what is, how long is the process now taking? Okay, you served them, but now how long is this going to take? Yeah, I mean, all I can say is get in line, get your number, you know, do it now. Don't wait. Yes, it's taking longer. And there's even more rights that the tenants have right now that can stall out the case. But there's no reason as the homeowner to delay the process. You have to get started. You have to get in line. Um, you know, in terms of timing, that's kind of a tricky, tricky one. Um, at least now there's no there's not the hardship stay. So if you. Um, you know, if a tenant's having a hardship, they don't get to stop the case, whereas before they could. We can still proceed. Um, unfortunately, there is still a law in effect under ERAP, which is the Emergency Rental Assistance Program, where if a tenant applies for this rental assistance, um, while that application is pending and you cannot um, go forward with the eviction case. So that's a whole nother topic. I don't know how much you want yeah. to talk about that, <laughs> but it's a nightmare for homeowners. Um, so strategically, I'm really telling people, if you can go for a holdover instead of a non-pay case, because although the ERAP applies to both, right now it applies to both holdover mm -hmm. and rental cases, which makes no sense because if I'm trying to evict a tenant mm -hmm. because their lease expired, I don't need their money. Why are they getting a stay? Because they asked for rental assistance. It's right. too much. <laughs> so I'm hoping we are hoping that the law is going to narrow and change and get, you know, get appealed that it will only apply to rental cases. That's not the case right now. But I'm encouraging clients to do holdovers if they can to avoid that. And we can make those arguments later on. If somebody says, hey, you know what, Leslie, I want to go ahead. I want to evict my, my tenants. Like, what do you start the process with them? You just tell them, hey, provide me all these documentations. Mm -hmm. And do they, do, can they do a Zoom meeting with you just mm -hmm. like we're doing right now? Or right. do they have to go to the office or you have options for them, it sounds like. Right. I don't I haven't met with a client in person in so long. Um, yeah. So we do everything by Zoom. Sometimes I just send an email. I say, this is what I need. Um, I do a payment link so you can pay me um, virtually also. And then as long as I get the documents, I can draft everything everything. I send it back. It has to be signed by the landlord up until the, the court documents. It doesn't even have to be notarized. So as a tenant, I mean, as the client, the owner, you can just sign on your computer, send it back or print, sign, scan back, um, you know, whatever. It's only when um, my clients don't have a lot of technological capacity that we have to make other arrangements. And you know, one of the other thing too, is that a lot of homeowners are nervous about doing the whole eviction process because they're thinking two things. One, I have to go to court. So if they work with you, do they have to go to court and present themselves? And the second part is like, wow, what if this tenant do something to me or destroy my house? So what are those two things that really gets people nervous that you can help them with? Or what do you recommend for them to do? Yeah. So for the first question, um, there's no in-person appearance requirement for the homeowner if they have an attorney until and unless we go to trial. So during the trial, I have to present a witness that has personal knowledge of the case. So it's going to be the homeowner or if they have a managing agent or somebody who has personal knowledge that can testify that this is the tenant. Uh, this is how much rent they owe, whatever it is. So generally speaking, my clients never go into court because we rarely go to trial. 90% of all cases settle. Awesome. Um, the second question was the retaliation. Yeah, that's a big fear. Um, I mean, I would say also 90% of or more of my cases don't involve retaliation. I mean, once usually the tenants are already like acting up when, when we know that it's, it's just, it's just bound to happen. So we just have to proceed anyways, because they're already destroying the place. But I would say 90% of the time, we don't see retaliation just because there's an eviction. Um, to be honest, a lot of tenants get a better deal by getting evicted, because they know that they could drag this out for a really long time. And if they go to trial, they get nothing. And they owe my client money, and they have like judgment against them. Whereas with settlement, what we wind up doing is paying the tenant to leave. Wow. So, so that makes sense now why you don't even go to trial because then they're going to get not super. They're going to have to pay you as the attorney. So it makes a lot of sense why they're doing that. 